That was a little burp. Sorry about that. Too much tea. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Becky from Back to Fly Tea and welcome back to my channel. This is episode 9. I'm coming at you today from the south coast of England where I live with my partner, our son and our Springer Spaniel called Molly. So, um, apologies for the light today. Um, it's one of those days where it's like either chucking it down with rain or the sun streams through the window. So I've had to pull the curtain in a little bit. Um, hopefully the colour's not too bad. We'll see if I look a bit grey you know, or if I get a flash on me and I don't notice, I apologise for that. So, um, so yeah, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. This is where I talk about all things knitting related and sometimes a bit of sewing. And um, welcome if you've joined me again and you're in it for the long haul. It's lovely to have you with me. So, it's been a bit busy here in Blighty. We've had the cosy up for winter now. We've drawn the prizes. So, um, there was a video that both Ali from the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast and I put out where we announced all the winners. You'll be pleased to know that everything's in the post, so you should be getting it soon if you haven't got it already. It's taken me a little while to get around to posting them all on, so I'm really sorry about that, but they're done. So that's really good. And what a great mail it was. We had so many people enter and it was just really nice. It was just a really lovely community. So um, we'll have to do something soon. I've got a bit of an idea. Um, I quite like your thoughts on it. So. Um, We'll talk about that a bit later on. I have got loads to show you today. I've got finished objects, I've got works in progress, I've got acquisitions, and I'm gonna share the love, and um, yeah, a few other bits and bobs along the way if I think about it. So the other thing is, is that Jack's home today, he's got a day off, and he's playing music upstairs, literally, just up there. So if you hear a foot stomping, or a box playing, or a guitar, or whatever, that's what that is. So just have to bear with me. Um, it's not often we have days off together, so obviously I wanted to do a podcast today, and he wants to do some recording. So, you know, that's how life is. Nothing smooth sailing here. There's normally something going on that, um, yeah, isn't planned, shall we say. Got my tea, just English breakfast tea in my, um, little field mouse mug, which I've shown you before, but I'll show you again because it's, it's really cute. So yeah, so drinking that today, I need caffeine again. Hmm. Let's start with some finished objects, shall we? So the first one is my Appengluhen cardigan um, by Isabel Kramer. Um, it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry, it's brilliant. And I wanted to throw out my old frumpy jumpy. I had a, a brown cable jumper that I'd had for years that had really pilled and it was a bit manky and uh, my other half kind of always called it my frumpy jumpy. So I decided to make another one and I chose the Appengluhen, which is also known as the Alpine Glow um, cardigan. So I shall show you here. So it's finished. There you go, I'm really pleased with it and I've worn it loads and loads. Um, I'll pop a picture in here of me wearing it so you can have a look. To be honest, it's quite warm in here today and with lights on and things like that, it's, yeah, it's just a bit too much. Step too far. Um, the yarn is from Knit Picks. It's their Simply Wool in their Wilbur colorway. Um, and it really showed up the cables beautifully. So I'm stay chuffed with that. The other thing is I couldn't find any buttons that would go perfectly, so I actually ended up covering some buttons um, in some uh, William Morris Liberty fabric that I had in my stash. I shall show you a couple of those, I don't know if you can see that. Mm. Come a bit closer. There you go. So yeah, see they look really pretty. So that's my first finished object. Um, I made it, I think it, I made it the smallest size. It's all on my Ravelry page. You can go over to Ravelry. I forgot to mention we have a group for the podcast called the Back to Blighty Podcast. Um, and also I'm knitting in Blighty on there. But you can go and have a look at the project page to see what I did. I made the smallest size. Um, it comes up quite snug. Um, but as you can see from my um, dungarees, I wear quite a lot of cinched in things around my waist. So I like things to be quite snug. And, um, and I also made it a little bit shorter than the pattern suggested as well, for that reason. So, really pleased. First garment of the year. Well happy with that. Oh, there was a bit of sunshine. Did you see that, folks? In Blighty, we're not getting that very often at the moment. It's been gale force winds. It's been pretty horrible, actually. Hmm. 
The next thing I'm going to talk to you about, um, I haven't got, well I have got them with me but they're on my feet and I'm not taking them off, um, but I made a pair of slippers. I called them my ruby slippers on Ravelry and this is where my um, terrible um, reading of um, other European languages comes in, shall we say. So I used the Four Seasons Grundle Filts Vol Colour. Yeah, told you. Go and look at it on Ravelry. So anyway, so I'll put a picture up here again. Um, these slippers are just brilliant. You make them and they're like that long once you've knitted them and then you put them in the washing machine with a few tennis balls and they felt and they come up really beautifully. Um, so yeah, so love them. Gonna make another pair. They're a bit hard on the hands. I don't know about you. I always find that the bigger the needle, actually, they're yeah, you know, it, it sort of plays with my hands a bit, it's, it makes them ache a bit, so um, yeah, really love them, really pleased with them, that's all I can say about those really, yeah, great, great stuff, we're whizzing through people, this could be a nice quick podcast, we'll see. Okay, so my next finished object is a pair of socks, and um, here they are. So I call them my Kingfisher, Kingfisher socks um, and uh, yeah, love them. Look at those, they're great. So this yarn, oh, there's the sun again. I'm not sure uh, what yarn it was. I'm really sorry, I can't, I, I normally keep the labels and I'm really good about it or I put it on Ravelry and I don't know what's happened to it, but it was, I think it might have been a Regia yarn Sorry, it's the best I can do. However, I had a little acquisition and the lovely Alison from Biff Shibby Yarns sent me some little minis as a gift. And this teal colour, this teal colour here, which is probably blowing out a little bit now, is um, part of her Warm and Cozy mini skein set. Um, and they matched absolutely perfectly. So thank you, Alison. I really appreciated that little gift and um, it was really nice to have a little, little present in the post. Doesn't happen very often, does it? Unless, obviously, I buy things. Um, but yeah, that was really nice. However, so I, I finished the socks and um, these, sorry, I'm just waffling already. This pattern is the Hermione Everyday Socks. Um, which is a lovely pattern, I've made it before. Um, they kind of make the fabric a little bit squishier, so they're nice and warm. Um, but what I didn't realise is I was so pleased and I posted a picture on Ravelry and you can go and have a look, I don't mind, because you know, we share our dirty washing here, don't we? Um, but what I did is I didn't realise until I put it up and loads of people had been really kind and said some nice things. I did the toes differently. It's really obvious on picture, really obvious. So I'm going to show you, you can have a spot the difference right here. Um, look. So this one I did my standard, and that one I'm not sure what happened. I don't know what I did. But I didn't do it the same. They're completely different, I don't know if you can see. If you can't see them very well, go over to Instagram, you can see it. It's blatantly obvious over there. Um, but anyway, they're for me. Was I going to rip it out? No. So um, yeah, they're fine. Love them. Oh, sorry about that. So yeah, so great, great pattern. I did a German short row heel, but I've got a new favorite heel. Mm. This is the knitting podcast with lots of new things, lots of new skills I've been trying out. So um, let's get on to the next one. So last podcast, I showed you my past the quality street socks, which was a yarn that I dyed up and um, yeah. Love the yarn, it's on a Stellina base. I'll show you them now. There we go. And look, I've done afterthought heels. I did it, everybody. Now, the lovely Jane um, commented on my podcast and she told me that Amy from Stranded Dye Works had done a tutorial on afterthought heels. Honestly, it's the clearest video you could wish for. It was just brilliant. And um, yeah, really love these socks. Just a vanilla sock. Um, as I say, this colour here is past the quality street. And then I had a little green mini that I dyed up ages ago. 
I don't know if you can see the sparkle, but um, it's coming up a little bit blue in this light. Um, but I think I'm coming out a little bit grey as well. Sorry about that. Vanilla socks, love them. Really happy with those ones. Afterthought heels, they're the best thing ever. I mean, why didn't I do it before? I think it's much neater. I don't think you get a gap in the corner. Um, it's a much neater, can you see here? It's much neater in this corner here. And uh, yeah, and they're just so quick. It's like you knit the sock, you knit the whole, you know, whole length of it, bash out a toe, do the afterthought heel, and um, yeah, brilliant invention. That is my new go-to heel, I've decided. So uh, yeah, really love that. Um, yeah, not really a lot more to say about those, really. Um, I do 60 stitches, two by two rib. It's all on Ravelry. As I said, if you go on my project page, you can see them all there. So, hmm. Am I waffling? I feel like I am. I feel like I'm like, just, yeah. My brain's a bit all over the place. Okay, so another new skill. I have done some colour work and I'm going to show you my cow that I made. So this is the Petiki um, pattern by Francois Denoy and she does a hat and a cow pattern and um, yeah I, I did the cow so I love it. Look at that. So this is my first attempt at colour work and I have to say I'm pretty pleased with that. Now this colour is um, the top one is it's all done in double knit. This top colour is Voyager, which is my own colourway, it's like a tealy colour. And the pink is Calm Before the Storm, and I put them together. I'm an Outlander fan. Um, more of the books actually than the programme, although the, the first few series were brilliant. Not so keen on the last one because it's quite different to the book. So um, yeah, but I love the books. And so yeah, so these two colours were, yeah, they were based on Outlander on the Voyager book and uh, love it. This pattern is so easy, it's brilliant. Um, I, it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry, but I just love the colours. The colours are so nice. Should I pop it on? Let's pop it on. I'll probably make a right pig's ear a bit, but let's just pop it on. So, oop. So yeah, so there we go. Oh, light. So yeah, so really pleased with it. Takes a little bit of sorting out, but you know. But yeah, love it. It's really cozy and um, yeah, colour work. Did it, everybody. Really pleased with that. So yeah, so I'm gonna make the hat actually at some point. I've still got some of that yarn left, um, but I kind of want to make one where it's a little bit more structured, it stands a bit more. This is um, quite drapey, which is really nice. Oh, light, which is really nice, but it is quite drapey. Um, but I'm so proud of that, really pleased. And the yarn's really soft as well, so yeah. So, I went to Unravel, and it did not disappoint. It was brilliant. But if you remember rightly, I was looking for some yarn to do a colourwork sweater, or two. And I had a few patterns in mind, and I just thought, if I have about four or five patterns in mind, if I see the yarn and I find it, and I think, yes, that's for that jumper, then I know, I know what to get. So I did choose a pattern, and I chose the Chauncey sweater, which I'll put a photograph up here. Now the Chauncey sweater is by Isabel Kramer and it's got a lovely colour work yoke and I wanted, well, I was interested in John Arvon um, yarn um, purely because I, I really like their knit by numbers, the range of colour and I wanted to see it but I, I sort of had in my mind that I probably was going to buy something from John Arvon and I did. So I bought um, some four ply yarn to make the Chauncey sweater. I'm addicted to colour work. This is like my favourite thing ever. I'm just going to tuck a few ends in because um, nobody needs to see all my ends. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. 
Isn't it great? So, look at that yolk. So I've gone for like this dusky pink colour. Um, it's kind of a brownie pink actually. And the, the yolk colour, I've gone for just a neutral sort of beigey grey. It's not a real beige, it's more of a grey. But it's going to be so lovely. Sorry, just trying to organise myself a little bit. So I shall stand up and show you how far I've got. So I've just started, oh, just started the rib down here. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how that's worked out. And I think it's pretty even. I shall show you my folks because that's what people do, don't they? They like to show you the inside. I mean, I suppose, you know, as I said, dirty laundry. It's all, it's all okay here. So yeah, so there's my folks. There we go, which are pretty neat, I think. I don't think I've done bad. This yarn is so soft. It is like the perfect, perfect jump weight. It's light. Um, but it is just, I can't wait to wear it seriously. And do you know what? I'm quite looking forward to Sleeve Island. Um, so that's a, that's a new one on me. So I'm so proud of this. Love it. Um, that's at the moment, that's living in my bag that the lovely Ali bought me. But I think I'm going to have to upgrade to a, a bigger bag, unfortunately. I love that bag. So. So yeah, so that's my Chauncey sweater. I'll show you the colours here. So this is the Knit by Numbers. This is the, um, oh, what's the label? And as you can see, I don't know if you can see in this light, it's not a great light, but it's like a plummy colour, I guess. And then this, you have to excuse my cake. My ball wind is getting a bit old and um, yeah, it's all sort of falling apart. But this is the, the colour of the colour work. So as you can see, together, oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, hooray for colour work. I am addicted to this project. It is amazing, I love it. So yeah, so that's on the needles at the moment. So I've only got, I think the pattern calls for a one and a half inch rib. I'm gonna do two inches, because um, I like a nice deep rib. Um, I made it slightly shorter again because I want it to sit in the right place, um, but I really can't wait to wear it. I um, did the size small, which is the second size in the pattern, just because I really like the way the fabric was with my gauge um, and it came slightly tighter, so I went up slightly bigger. And I've tried it on, it is absolutely perfect. So very excited about that. So yeah. So that was one purchase at Unravel. I shall share a couple of other purchases I got at Unravel at the end. Um, the Deep Rose Colour, um, they don't have names. Oh look, you can kind of see there in the, in the light that that's kind of like what the colour is. Um, this is 7.6 KBN. I've seen it by numbers. And this one is 12 KBN. So yeah, it's blowing out a bit, but you know, you get the idea. Anyway, all details on the Ravelry page. So, what else have I been working on? Well, I need to um, get a sock blocker ready because I've been making a pair of socks. And these socks are quite special because I went up to Newcastle. Um, Jack and I went up to Newcastle. Jack had an interview at Newcastle University. Um, which was really exciting. So during half term we went up and we decided not to drive because it's such a long way from the south coast of England that we would get um, the train and we would get a coach um, which meant loads and loads of knitting time so I decided to cast on a pair of socks um, just to remember the occasion. I've only done one of them so I've got a half finished object but here we go. So this is the Winding Ways sock pattern by Tin Can Knits. It's a pay for pattern, um, but it's got this lovely um, lace design up the top. It's got a ribbed bit at the back, heel flap and gusset and a wedge toe. And this yarn Jack got me for Christmas. It's the Malabrigo sock yarn. And initially when I was winding it up, I was a little bit disappointed because it kept breaking. I had like three balls of it in the end. And I was thinking, oh, this is a bit disappointing. Um, but actually, it's knitted up beautifully. I'm going to just show you 
take my ring off if I put a hole in the lace, um, show you the front of the sock. So the lace runs down the front of the sock. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. And you can see it kind of winds um, in different directions. It's really, really pretty and it's quite addictive. That bit of the pattern only goes over 15 stitches. So um, yeah, and then you have a rest row in between. Um, but it's really lovely and it fits really, really nicely. So, oh, light. Yeah, really pleased with that. I think it's gonna be a really nice pair of socks. So I haven't started the other one yet, um, but I will. So, and uh, yeah, we had a great time in Newcastle. We stayed with friends. Um, yeah, everything went really well. So, but um, it's not my news to share at the moment. So um, yeah, so that was really good. So I've done my Newcastle socks and um, so I need to cast on the other one. Okay, another new, another new skill. I know, it's amazing. I decided I would cast on a pair of socks and I would try two at time socks. Yes. So I cast on these. Now the yarn, quite frankly, they're a bit leery and um, they're just for me. They're a bit woolly, um, but they're using Rome um, sock yarn. There we go. Okay, so they're coming out a bit dark, mm, a bit in the light, a bit out here, I don't know. Anyway, so this is Rome yarn, and I'm doing two at a time magic loop, and I'm really enjoying it. it took me a little while to get the right tension across the join of the magic loop, if you see what I mean. Um, this yarn is, you know, it's okay, um, which is why they're for me. They were going to be a gift for someone, but they're going to be for me because they're a bit woolly and I have actually got a pair of socks that I've knit in Rome before um, and they have lasted the test of time, like chuck them in the washing machine type socks, they're brilliant, they don't, you know, felt or anything like that. Um, but they're a bit scratchy and they'll be fine for me in the winter so I'm going to carry on with them and I'm going to do afterthought heels with them as well um, just because that's my new favourite method. So um, so yeah, so I've got those on the go. Um, here's one of the cakes of yarn here. Can you see that? So there's just some greens and purples and oranges and things like that in them. So I think the disappointing thing sometimes with these um, commercial sock yarns is that they look really nice in the ball and then you knit with them and it's a bit like, mm. anyway, they are what they are. So yeah, so that is um, my socks on the needles at the moment. So I've got two pairs on the go at the moment. Um, now the other thing that I've started is um, the turtle dove. Now I'd seen this pattern before on Ravelry and to be honest with you, didn't really think that much of it. Um, just not really my kind of style really. You know, I like things a bit more cropped and a bit more fitted and it seems quite a flowy card. I'm just sort of my needles out. Just gonna fill in the time with some waffle as I do it. Um, but then I found uh, a new podcast and the podcast was um, Kat from Heather and Hops go over and see her podcast. I love it, it's brilliant. She's only been knitting since, I think it was last September, not long, about six months or so. And um, she's done like color work. She is like a machine. Um, she's absolutely brilliant. And her podcast is so lovely and she takes you on her travels and it's really, really nice. So, um, so you must pop over and see her. And I saw her version of the Turtle Dove and I was like, I've got to knit that. So I'm going to put in a couple of pictures of Kat wearing hers here because it is it looks very different to the pattern on Ravelry. So, so yeah, so it's really lovely. And I decided that I would shamelessly copy her. So sorry, Kat, but I really did love it. So, um, so it's all your fault, but um, I'm really pleased you shared it. So I've decided to make it in blue. And I haven't done very much. Oh. Just trying to sort my sort my bits and bobs out. So, but this is how far I've got. So there's the turtleneck, and this is in a 
chunky yarn I think it is it's really really lovely it's a really lovely blue and um, I get away with blue quite a lot I wear a lot of blue things she's wearing blue um, so yeah and do you know what this is the only thing I didn't write down in my notes for the podcast is the yarn but I shamelessly stole the yarn that Kat used as well and I'll I'll put a link down below or on the screen here so that you can see it but it's really soft and lovely um, and it's just one of those like proper cozy up um, proper cozy up yarns I just love that blue that's such a nice blue and the stitch definition is really nice on it as well so yeah so I think I'm gonna be well happy with that I did make the turtleneck a bit longer because I like things that are a bit longer here. I, I kind of like all or nothing with um, with necks. So um, so yeah. So I'm gonna continue with that. So thanks, Cat, and welcome to um, yeah, welcome to YouTube and everything. She's um, she's done some podcasts and they're really lovely. Please go and um, go and check her out. She's brilliant. And thank you, Cat, for letting me share your pictures. I did ask for permission, so I really appreciate that. So, acquisitions. Now, I've got a few. Um, the first one I want to start with is the yarn that I got from Alison from Biff Sugar Yarns. I just saw it on her Instagram, and Instagram's really terrible, isn't it? Because sometimes you see things, you just think, I've got to have that. Um, but I went on her site and, or her shop, and I really found it really really hard to choose because they're all just gorgeous but I went with Water Lily which is a four ply uh, 7525 merino nylon um, and here it is here it is just oh, stunningly beautiful I hope that's coming out it's it's beautiful I'm really sorry the light's not great um, but I couldn't resist it it's got these gorgeous speckles and this greeny blue base that's probably more like the color actually right there and there's her tag so yeah love them and as I said Alison was so lovely that she sent me um, the teal mini from the warm and cozy collection and i just wanted to show you the other colors because i could have used the orange actually they're so gorgeous look at those look at those colors aren't they beautiful really lovely i'm not holding them very well oh sorry alison i'm not doing them a great deal of justice my modeling skills are pretty <laughs> pretty much to be desired yeah, they are beautiful. Really recommend the yarn, everybody. Go and pop over, check out, check out her shop, Biff Sugar Yarns. Good stuff. Okay, so Unravel. I'm just going to show a couple of things. Um, the first thing I bought, just because I really wanted to try, was Dragon Hill Studio Yarns. Um, and this is um, Pink Dahlia, one of their sock, sock cakes. It's sparkly and gorgeous, and I love it. Uh, trying to find a good, oh, look, sun, everyone. Yeah, really, really beautiful. There we go. You can kind of see it there. It's really, really beautiful. So I got one of these just because I wanted another sparkly pair of socks. You can't have too many socks. And look at the way it's packaged. It is just beautiful so um so i got one of those the other thing that i bought at unravel was some yarn to make another color work sweater so i was really taken with a carlina pullover which is by whitney hayward i shall pop a photograph in here to show you it is really really gorgeous it's a paid for pattern and it's worked in four ply fingering weight and I chose um, colours very, very similar to the picture, actually. I think on the picture it's more of an natural, and I've gone for more of a blush or cream, but it's like a blushy colour. So I've gone for these two colours together. Um, I think they're coming out a little bit grey, they're a bit warmer than that, and the, this grey isn't quite so dark in, the, um, in real life, so to speak. And um, you can see there it's a little bit more, if I put it in the sunshine, it's a little bit more pinky. So it's a very, very pale pink. 
Um, it's, as I say, it's like a cream with a pinky tone to it. And I think they are just gonna look lovely. So, yeah, so the main is gonna be this color and the color work is gonna be this color. The pattern is really beautiful. It's got a deeper yoke. Um, so the yoke comes down a bit further down the bust. There's a bit more color work, which is great. I was a bit, a bit sad to finish the color work on the Chauncey because I was really, really getting into a rhythm and really enjoying it. But the different thing about the Carlina pullover is it's not quite as fitted on the sleeve and it's got a really big turn cuff and a rib that's in um, garter stitch which gives it a really lovely border so I'm really looking forward to making that. Now this yarn is um, Whistle Bear yarn, it's a British um, yarn um, and yeah it's quite woolly, it's beautiful um, but it's going to grip really nicely and uh, I'll just show you the labels again. The lady on the stall for this was just so friendly and so helpful um, and I love it. The I had to get four of the blush and they're from two different dye lots so I am going to have to alternate skeins which is fine but I'm really really looking forward to this. This is 60% um, Whistle Bears Cheviot fur shearing that's how you pronounce it, and 40% locally reared blue faced Leicester. So it's, um, yeah, this is blue, Cheviot blue, and this is Cheviot Marsh. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm just going to show you the word. There you go. There you go. Make of it what you will, but it's beautiful, um, and I'm really, really excited to be using that. So, yeah, I got a couple of other small skeins of sock yarn. Um, I went out with Jack. Oh, we went and did the sock meticians um, double knitting class, which was just so ex inspiring and lovely. So I bought, did buy a couple of balls of that in like a mustard and a plum, well, like aubergine color. Um, but it was really inspiring. Nathan was just so friendly, so funny. And uh, yeah, we had the best time. I went up with Jack and his girlfriend Thea and um, yeah, we just had a really, really lovely day of shopping and knitting and it was brilliant fun. So um, so yeah, so we had a really lovely time. I spent lots, um, but I'd been saving and I'd been on my, um, what was it called? What was it we called it? Hold on, I wrote it down. Um, the pledge. We had a pledge. Jack and I had a pledge that we weren't going to buy anything until Unravel. I broke the pledge. Only a little bit though, just a tiny bit. Um, so now, it doesn't matter, I can buy what I fancy, when I fancy it, but I've got enough to keep me going for a little while. So, um, so yeah, so that's about it from me. I hope you've enjoyed spending a little bit of time with me today. Um, it's been lovely to have you with me. Please, 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 please feel free to leave a comment. It's always lovely to hear from you. And um, I think I might do another cow. I might do a colour work one, what do you reckon? you be interested in that? Just thinking, you know, kind of bring us all together and we can have a good old chat about it. So um, anyway, let me know what you think. Until next time, I'm going to stop waffling now. It's probably for the best. I shall see you soon. Take care.